ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the mtr technologies limited q2 fy25 earnings conference call as a reminder all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to Mr. Parth Patel from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you Nami. Good morning everyone. On behalf of Antar Technologies Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to all participants on Q2 and H1 FY25 annual discussion call. Today on our call we have Mr. Srinivas Reddy sir, Managing Director and Promoter, Mr. Guneshwar Rao sir, Chief Financial Officer Ms. Shilika Jaski, Head Strategy and IR. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor deck and press release that we have uploaded on Exchanges and the company's website. I would like to give a short disclaimer before we begin the call. This call may contain some of the forward-looking statements, which are completely based upon our belief, opinion, and expectations as of today. The statements are not guaranteed for our future performance and involve unforeseen risk and uncertainties. With this, I would like to hand over the call to Srinivas, sir. Over to you, sir. Today in the call, I'm joined by I'm Mr. I'm so Dinesh sorry, Dinesh. sir. I'm so sorry. You go on mute. Can you please uh, uh, re-announce again? Start again, please. So sorry. Hello and good morning to everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Today on the call, I am joined by Mr. Guneshwar Rakhusala, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Leka Jaisi, Head Strategy and Investor Relations, and Orient Capital, our Investor Relations Partners. We have uploaded our updated investor deck, press release, and result highlights on the stock exchanges and company website. I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. I am pleased to inform you all that we have delivered a stronger, strong quarter with 48% increase in revenues QOQ basis and 122% increase in EBITDA QOQ in line with the guidance given in Q1. The second half is expected to be stronger than the first half. We expect to achieve revenues of around uh, overall revenues for the year for around 725 crores with a margin around 21% by end of FI25. We are working on several strategic projects in the company over the past three years across all the sectors, which will give us a progressive growth in revenues over the next two, three years. There shall be a sequential improvement in margins in the coming quarters as we ramp up the production of new products and aerospace and clean energy sectors as well. The company has added a lot of new products such as sheet metal assemblies, ASP assemblies, and enclosures in clean energy vertical over the past two years that are generating substantial revenues now. MTR continues to innovate and add new products across all verticals. We have been working on maximizing the order inflow in our areas of focus, such as engine subsystems, aerostructures, and specialized products across space, MNC aerospace, and different sectors. Accordingly, we have enhanced our aerospace customer base secured the combustor's order for transit engines and enter into long-term agreements with MNC customers as well. Going forward, we expect to deliver a robust growth in clean energy and MNC aerospace verticals because of the product portfolio we have developed over the past two years and the new products we are currently working on. I would like to give a detailed overview across all the sectors. In clean energy, we have executed around 192 crores of orders in the first half of the year. We have dispatched 1,808 units of uh, hotbox units and 36 units of electrolyzers. The closing order book for Blue Energy stands at 493 crores by end of H1. We are expecting similar execution in H2. We are optimistic about growth in clean energy in FI26 as Bloom gave an indication for execution of 4,000 units in calendar year 2025 as against an initial indication of 3,000 units. We expect a 20% growth in revenues from this vertical alone in FI26. We have witnessed a substantial growth in space in line with our projections in the first half, where we have delivered around 17 crores of orders 
in MNC Aerospace for the first time. We expect to execute around 45 crores of orders from MNC Aerospace in H2. We estimate a robust growth in this vertical over the next 3-4 years with 45% revenue increase. We have delivered around 16 crores of orders restore in first half and we project around 25 crores of execution in second half of the year to restore. While ISCO is projected to grow at 20% on year-on-year -year basis over the next two three years due to the strong industry tailwinds. We have closing order book of 158 crores in space, of which 50 crores is from MNC Aerospace and 108 crores is from ISCO. The execution in civil nuclear power stands at cutting crores in the first half. The execution in the second half will be stronger as we have built, uh, uh, working on the projects, uh, major projects like FMDC and FT systems. Uh, and we are working on it in the first half and deliveries will commence in the second half. So we expect to deliver around 60 crores of orders in FI25 in this sector on a cumulative basis. This sector is expected to witness a 40-45% growth in FI26 backed by robust order book and strong order pipeline from refurbishment of uh, reactors and Kaiga 5 and 6 reactors. The revenues from defense for first half stand at 8.3 crores. The annual execution is estimated to be around 20 crores. We are emphasizing on this sector and working on increasing our market share by securing strategic orders related to engine subsystems and aerostructures that have been our core competencies of MPR. We recently secured a developmental order for combustors of stranded engines based on air breathing technology for 15 crores. Similarly, we are working on ring kit assemblies, airframes, and other structure related orders for some of the prestigious defense programs. We have registered a phenomenal growth in products with 71 crores of execution in the first half. We expect to execute nearly 140 crores of revenue from products on an annual basis by end of FI25. This vertical is projected to register a growth of more than 30% over the coming quarters. From fabrication vertical, we expect to execute around 22 crores of orders from hydropower, wind energy, and other sectors. The company estimates a robust closing order book because of the increased order inflow in H2. We have improved our cash flows over the past three quarters and target to improve it further going forward as well. Also, we aim to reduce our networking capital days progressively over the next two three years. I would like to reiterate that we are working on achieving robust revenue growth, sequential improvement in margins, reduction of working capital days, and improvement of cash flows. We can look forward to consistent improvement in these areas on a progressive basis over the next two three years as well. In the short term, we have targeted to achieve around 725 crores of revenue with around 21% of EBITDA by end of FI25. Our CFO, Mr. Guneshwar Rao, will discuss in detail on the financial performance for Q1 FI20, Q2 FI24. Sorry. Over to you, Mr. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Srinivas Reddy. Uh, good morning and warm welcome to our earning call. I would like to extend my gratitude to all the shareholders and prospect to shareholders for, uh, for your continued trust and support. Today I will be discussing key financial performance metrics for Q2 FI25 on consolidated basis, along with our strategic priorities around cost optimization, growth, and operational efficiency. Uh, quarter on quarter, when it comes to quarter on quarter performance, we achieved a robust quarter with revenue growth of 48.3%, reaching 190.2 crores in Q2 FI25, compared to 128.3 crores in Q1 FI25. EBITDA improved significantly, standing at 36.8 crores in Q2 FI25, up to 121.7% from 16.6 crores in Q1 FI25. Profit before tax saw remarkable growth, reaching 25.3 crore in Q2 FI25, representing 307.9% increase from 6.2 crore in Q1 FI25. Profit after tax reached 18.8 crore in Q2 FI25, marking a 324% increase from rupees 4.4 crore in FI, Q1 FI25. When it comes to year-on-year -year performance, revenue from operations grow by 14%, uh, YOY to 190.2 crores in Q2 FI25, 
from 166.8 crore in Q2 FY24. EBITDA recorded a modest increase of 2% YOY reaching 36.8 crores in Q2 FY25 versus Rs. 36.1 crore in Q2 FY24. PBT slightly decreased by 1.5% to 25.3 crores in Q2 FY25 from 25.7 crore in Q2 FY24. PAT was 18.8 crore in Q2 FY25 when it compares to 20.5 crore in Q2 FY24. <coughs> uh, so when it comes to operational improvement strategic focus, we anticipate EBITDA margins will improve in H2 because of higher operating leverage due to increased revenues and optimization of costs driven by the improved operational efficiencies once we enter into batch production in MNC Aerospace Division and also other verticals. The company has a reduced the long-term debt by 16 crore, bringing it down to 142.5 crore to 126.4 crore out of the total repayment obligation of 45 crores by end of this year. Cash flow from operations stands at 18 crore in Q2 FI25 with the goal of surpassing FI24's annual cash flow of 57.4 crore by end of FI25 with increased revenue projections. Our networking capital uh, to revenue days are 247 days, and uh, we are targeting to register to 220 days by end of financial year FI25. So, uh, as told by our MD, the company has been focusing on various strategic initiatives to drive growth and risk mitigation, including expanding our customer base, establishing a dedicated aerospace facility in Hyderabad, increasing our product portfolio with current clients, and exploring opportunities in new verticals such as oil and gas. Looking ahead, we are looking forward to EBITDA margins around 20%, driven by higher operating leverage and by enhancing cost efficiency through process improvements. With this, I open the floor for discussion and welcome any questions you may have. Thanking you once again. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Viprav Srivastava from Philip Capitals. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, I'm Audible, right? Yes, sir, you're Audible. Right. So, first question is the guidance. What's the margin guiding for full year? Can it be reiterate? Margin and revenue? Hello? Uh, hello? Excuse me. Yeah, uh, actually, oh. as our guidance is around 725 crores revenue and EBITDA around 21%. Right, right. And uh, for FY26, I mean, any thought process, what, what kind of roadmap are you seeing? Oh. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, you are audible, uh, Sivatwa. So for FI26, we are looking at uh, a growth of 20% uh, with improved EBITDA margins uh, moving forward from there. 20%, uh, right? 20% revenue growth for FI26. Why does decline? I mean, uh, in the past, the company has grown 70-50%. Why does 20% number? I mean, why does decline? We are, we are we are looking at we are we would prefer to be a little bit on the conservative side when we look at uh, the guidance numbers. So at this point of time, we're looking at about 20% revenue growth, so which comes out to roughly around 860 crores of revenue for next uh, FI26. Okay, uh, fair enough. And uh, I mean, how is Bloom going to contribute to this Bloom's energy revenue? I mean, are you seeing a ramp up there, or what's the outlook on that side? See, Bloom, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, uh, speech, what I've said earlier, 
they initially forecasted 3000 units uh, and now they have ramp they have increased uh, confirmed forecast for 4000 units for the next calendar year so what we are looking here the good news is that we are looking at uh, going back to complete uh, the original normal demand situation of bloom uh, which is what we are looking at for the next financial year the way we are looking at things right now but uh, Bloom's comment has been very positive, right? I mean, they are saying that they're expecting a strong growth in next calendar year. So, I mean, why is it not translating to your revenue growth? See, the forecast given by Bloom as of now, uh, they have given from 3,000 units to 4,000 units already. So, they might further improve it over the next two, three months. So, it, it goes in a stepwise manner. So, as of today, what information we have is what I'm trying to communicate. But definitely, it might be much higher. So it depends on how they would like to forecast and release orders accordingly. Okay. So, Bloom does a quarterly forecast uh, for you, or how, how for how long forecast do they give? Quarterly or half yearly? See, they normally uh, presently they are releasing orders based on quarter to quarter basis, but they give forecast for the calendar year. In fact, uh, so right now from 3,000, they have increased it to 4,000 units for next calendar year which can even go up further. So that depends uh, on a quarter to quarter basis, they up their forecast or the, mostly it is going to be in the upward trend. So by probably by end of this quarter, we'll know more about an increased forecast, what they would like to give. And based on that, the, all the materials are planned accordingly. Right. I just and want to add one thing. We never have given 70, 80% guidance. FI23, we achieved 78% revenue growth. And FI24, we gave around 40%. But later on, some of the transition issues, uh, uh, they, we could not achieve. But FI25, we have given 30%. We are sticking to around 37, 25 crores, we are saying. So we are sticking to that. We have never given 70, 80% growth year on year. No, no. The, the, the anticipation was that from FY26, the room numbers will come in, so that number will increase. No issues. Uh, just the last no. question. Uh, just last question. So, uh, uh, for the for the nuclear energy part, so how is that shaping up? What kind of revenue numbers are we expecting in FY25 for that? See, nuclear energy basically working on two major projects right now, and the deliverables will start from Q4. And the new order inflow from Taiga 5 and 6 and refurbishment reactor are expected in second half of the year, mostly by Q4, I guess. And the execution part will start from next year. So we are seeing a very strong growth happening in nuclear sector based on the kind of orders that we're going to receive. As I said, uh, we're expecting more than 500 crores worth of orders coming in from nuclear in the second half of this year. Okay. And last question, sir, uh, for 2-3. Uh, do you ex so, I mean, to, min to achieve your target, you would need to do 200 crore plus revenue, right? So, you would be able to do that, right, for the Q3? No, as I said, uh, the second half is going to be much stronger. I cannot just uh, precisely say how much we are going to do as of now, but we will be doing, uh, we will be having a strong revenue base in Q3 and Q4 as well. But overall, we will achieve a revenues of about 725 crores for this year. But I mean, in Q2 you told that in Q, uh, last quarter, you, in Q1 you told you will do 200 crore plus in Q2. So what's stopping you from giving a number for Q3? No, we'll do similar. I'm not trying to not to give numbers, but we'll do more or less similar numbers in Q3 and slightly more in Q4. That's what we're going to do. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Bala Murli Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Good morning, Bala. Uh, uh, we don't have any update as of now, but that's not what is included in our plans, even for this year or for next year. But what I'm hearing is that as soon as Bloom books the orders for the electrolyzers, we'll get uh, that additional uh, revenues or the orders that we're expecting from them. We know we'll have more clarity by end of this quarter, and hopefully we will start the electrolyzers vertical from next financial year for sure. Oh, okay, that's helpful. And for the end of 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 the end
fluence uh, as i said uh, we have already uh, we are in agreement with them so they have to win orders in the domestic market which uh, they have to win any orders so the moment they win the orders we we'll get back to back orders so we are just waiting for that to happen uh okay so that's all from us thank you the next question is from the line of meet jen from motilal oswal please go ahead hi sir i'm audible Yes, sir. You are. Yeah, you are. Good. Hi, sir. Uh, so, first question is: This quarter we saw, saw major jump in order for the defense part. You can you need to be little louder? I'm uh, audible to hear you well. I'm audible now. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So, this quarter we have seen a very good jump in the defense order book. So, can you just throw some light on that? Do uh, which uh, segment and which profile are we doing that? I can't hear you well. Can you just repeat your question again? On the defense part, uh, we have seen a very strong uh, growth in our order book. So, can you just touch upon that? See, uh, we have been working on various defense projects, uh, and what you are seeing right now is a result of that. So, in any vertical that we are working on, like for example, the scan detergents and a lot of other projects we are working on. So, our uh, the new product development team and the r&d team has been working with various different labs over the over the last 6 uh, months to 9 months so this is a result of that so basically we are going to even further work on various of such projects not only in defense but in the state sector where they are asking us to develop uh, various walls for them defense also they are doing the same thing with us so these are all the uh, result of what efforts we have been putting in which does not reflect in numbers but it is definitely showing the kind of result what we are seeing today and you will see that more happening over the next uh, quarter coming in so that's what it is okay uh, any update on the defense jv that we are looking for uh, not as yet uh, see uh, the, the good news is that we are we are, we are finalized various agreements with very good mnc's as we have said earlier with ii with uh, gk aerospace and stuff like that so we are continuing to do, work on various projects with them on the first tactical basis and the real ramp up and the batch production volume production will happen in the next financial year but we have already entered into certain production batches this year that's how you can see a much larger numbers in the mnc business right now and that's going on the right track and uh, we are very happy about it that they have been they have certified us for to produce for them and uh, we are also waiting for certain certifications by end of q4 so this will result in a substantial growth in this sector moving forward and okay and uh, one thing on the receivables and we have seen a very hard, strong increase in the receivable day this quarters so can uh, what this is regarding also we saw a lower inventory so can you uh, focus on that on that as well yeah based on the revenues what we have done and the dispatches what have happened so obviously the receivable days have gone up but uh during this quarter the the receivables will obviously come down but uh, most of the dispatches happen in the second half of this quarter uh and that's why you see the cycle lower higher receivables but probably it will come down during this quarter as we move forward so uh does it relate to any particular order or particular uh, client which has been delayed in the pay, uh, payment or something like that Oh, we Why don't have any delays in payment, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there, there is no delays. Ninety uh, percent of the ninety ninety five percent are receivables are current, and only five percent based on the quality clearances it will be paid. Uh, we there won't be any uh, you know overdue receivables. Okay. Okay. And last is on the product and other side. Uh, we are anticipating a strong growth in this segment for second half as well as for coming. Uh, yes. So, can uh, tell me some like any new products that we have launched or uh, that will be launched in the coming uh, quarters in this segment under the defense offsets or uh, defense embargo side. See, uh, the first thing is, uh, as I said, uh, we have you now we got the orders for some of the new product developments that we got in scramjet engines. The rollers too are already certified and approved by the defense. we are just waiting for the paperwork now it's a long drawn process with uh, defense to get the approvals it's a 100% import substitute and finally they have tried it they have tested it they are functioning 
uh, very well. But that's one good news. So we're just waiting for the official uh, documentation to be done. So once it is done, then we'll be able to launch the rural schools as well. And we're also looking at exports of uh, such products, not only for India, but also for exports. Uh, because we can compete with rural with Sweden very easily. It's not an issue at all. So we are working on various other projects. Like for example, we are working on heaters, the electrolyzers to reduce the cost. Uh, the R&D is working on that. So we are working on various walls for defense and as well as space right now. So all this is under work in progress and you will see the way we have seen the results now, you will see it happening quarter on quarter basis. What is the key product that is driving the, this segment as of now? Uh, which one? The product division? Product, yeah, product division. So it, it's got a combination of various things. We have the ASPs, we have the ball screws, uh, we have the uh, uh, the water lubricated bearings. These are the key products uh, that are driving the product division, right? Understood. And then one last question is, any guidance on the clothing order book side? Why for 25? Can you repeat that? Uh, any uh, comment on the closing order book for FI25? See, as I said, uh, we said earlier that we'll be closing at around 1,400 to 1,500 crores. It all depends on the uh, Kaiga Fire and Six orders kicking in in the second half, uh, which should definitely happen because everything is done and adapted. So it's only a matter of paperwork to be done by NCCL and the uh, bidder who has won the contract. So we're just waiting for that. So once that is done, mostly Either by end of Q3 or definitely in Q4, we should have uh, those orders sitting in and then we'll be able to close the order book at 1,500 crores and all. Okay. So our order, closing, closing order book uh, makes it Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, I request you to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions as there are more, many participants. So, okay. The next question is from the line of Metro Navas from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Um, just wanted to get a sense of what is the overall order book currently and how much of orders have we won in the first half and how much of orders do you expect to get in the full year? So uh, the overall order book as of end of Q2, I think, is around 940 crores. And uh, the orders that we have won for this quarter is around 247 crores and all. So that's what it is. And the end of the year, as I mentioned earlier, that we're looking at 1,400 to 1,500 crores. Uh, that includes also the orders coming in from Kaiga. But we get a lot more orders in the clean energy sector and as well as the MNC aerospace sector in the second half. So we are pretty much confident that we should close at 1,400 to 1,500 crores. So you have about a 1,500 crore order book, is it? By end of the year. As of now, it yeah. is about 940 crores. Okay. And... Out of this 1,400 crores, how much would be that Bloom Energy's contribution? It should be around 500 crores and all. Uh, that's what we're expecting. And 500 crores assumes the 4,000 unit number or 3,000? No, as of now, we have, to, we have considered 4,000 units. Uh, so as and when it keeps going higher, then probably we'll get higher orders coming in. It's not only the units, but also the... Uh, sheet metal assemblies and other things that we are doing for the bloom. So even that will also go proportionately higher, like enclosures and assemblies and all that. Understood. And what is the execution timeline for the bloom energy orders, typically? So technically it is for one year. See, the water orders they give, like when I say 4,000 units, it's for the next calendar year. So the next 12 months. Understood. So the 500 crores you will be able to execute in the next uh, fiscal. Yeah. Right, right. So that that gives us some good uh, guidance or, you know, at least visibility for uh, execution next year. Um, so I'm just trying to understand, um, you know, obviously your margins were much higher in the last couple of years and they've deteriorated as, you know, uh, you know, operating leverage went down and the revenues came down. Are you, uh, and, and in the second half, you need to report very good margins in order to, achieved the full year 21%. Uh, obviously, that was slightly disappointing. I'm just trying to understand, can we go back to the mid-20% range of margin? Or is it as the, you know, Bloom Energy gives you more business, the margin um, trajectory is coming down? Uh, just wanted your thoughts on that. 
Yeah, that's a good question. See, as I said earlier, we'll have sequential improvement in margins quarter on quarter basis moving forward. But when you look at the we end up ending up at 20, around 21 percent margin for this year. But one thing you should understand is that we're also looking at expanding our management bandwidth, the kind of revenues that we, the way we are growing. So we're also investing in a lot of human resources uh, areas and other areas in which we are looking at. And uh, that's how we are looking at right now. And a lot of outsourcing which we are doing right now will be done in-house moving forward. For example, the plasma coating which we are outsourcing in the United States right now for some of our products. Now we have the equipment coming in and the qualification is going on. So a lot of activity is happening in that area to reduce our costs drastically down. Uh, if you look at the other expenses, those things are going to come down drastically moving forward. And if you look at FI26, uh, uh, the kind of uh, estimates we have will definitely, uh, you know, improve our margins better and better. And uh, we're looking at uh, uh, 20, 24, 23, 24. I can't just say exactly right now, but definitely there'll be a progressive improvement uh, moving forward in mid-20s. Uh, uh, that's what we're looking at uh, over the next uh, year and year and a half. That's what we're looking at. We're going back to the normal margins, what we're looking at. But we are making all our efforts to not only expand our management bandwidth, reducing our outsourcing costs, getting qualified for various things that we are outsourcing right now, and improving our MNC business in a big way in aerospace as well. All this will contribute to better margins going forward, uh, as we can see right now. So just one last point. Obviously, Bloom Energy is a large contributor to the overall revenue, and its volatility also impacts your company, and obviously for you to give guidance, uh, you know, quarter on quarter is also stressful. I'm just trying yeah. to understand how will you kind of diversify out of Bloom. Uh, MCAS should not be linked just with Bloom, right? So it should be a company which is beyond just Bloom Energy. So I'm just trying yeah, to understand absolutely. how will you, you are absolutely to right. that. Yeah, I understand that. See, we are not depending on Bloom as such. If you look at our revenue growth, like for example, if you look at year-on-year -year basis, the revenues from other sectors are growing rapidly. For example, if you look at nuclear with the Tiger 5 and 6 coming in, the huge orders coming in flow, obviously we'll see a very good uh, revenue growth happening in nuclear sector. In a MNC Aerospace especially, uh, we have done a lot of work. Uh, what we were hardly doing anything earlier, now we are uh, doing extremely well in that in terms of the first articles and now doing the production basis for the MNCs. So we are improving on every sector other than growth. So over the next two years, you can see the other sectors' revenues growing very rapidly higher. And if Bloom is growing, there's nothing wrong with that. But we're also growing in other sectors. That's the way you should look at it. No, but I'm just saying as a company, wouldn't you want to make, you know, uh, the exposure to Bloom maybe 25-30% of your overall revenues rather than having an exposure of 40-50%? That's what I'm just trying to understand. Absolutely, you're right. So that's our target, right? How do we achieve the target is, one, grow in the other sectors as much as possible. So that's where our entire focus is, right? When we talk about margins, to grow in the other sectors, that's what I said. We have improved our management bandwidth. We are establishing a new exclusive aerospace facility by end of December this year. We are, doing, we are taking all the required steps uh, to achieve what you are trying to tell us, right? That, that's the goal for the company. And... Uh, the virtue of which is Bloom is growing much faster. And if they introduce electrolyzers, then it will even uh, grow higher. But there is a, a very conscious effort of improving the revenues in every vertical that we're working on right now. You got it, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Nilesh Soni from JM Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. I have two questions. Uh, one, can you uh, give us the update of the new client addition uh, in uh, in clean energy? Uh, how is the traction being over there? And uh, secondly, on the uh, roller screw, uh, what is the status over there? And and once once the mass production starts after this after the all. Uh, after all the trial process are done, so what can be the revenue potential for them uh, from that product in first year and then going forward? 
So my two questions. Uh, yeah, sure. So basically, in the clean energy segment, we, as I mentioned earlier, in the various sectors of fuel cell, hydrogen, wind, everything, we are working with various customers right now. Already, a lot of first articles have been done. We are moving into the batch production. Like we're looking at Voice, we're looking at uh, Andrix, G, uh, Barista is another company which has joined us. So we are adding a lot of clients, and uh, basically uh, these are the this is the area which we are trying to grow more and more moving forward, and uh, we'll continue to do that. But when it comes to fuel cells, we have not seen other than Bloom, we have not seen any uh, company which has grown to the level of Bloom right now where MTAR can get involved. Probably we'll look at it as and when any company has come to a stage where we can be their OEM moving forward as well. Now, what was your second uh, question on the roller screws? Uh, uh, now, roller screws, as I said, yeah, roller screws, I have said that all our roller screws have been qualified. We're just waiting for the documentation part of it, which is a 100% import substitute. The government of India, the defense programs and the space programs have been importing this at a very high cost from all this Sweden. Now, we'll be able to substitute that completely moving forward. I won't be able to quantify the exact numbers, but they have a huge demand for it. So, as and when we get the certification done uh, over the next one month, and then the entire uh, imports of roller schools would stop and entire would start supplying for all the programs within India. And we're also looking at some part of it for exports as well. So, we're working on the overall quantum of business that we can get. It is, it is uh, pretty much... Over the next one, two years, we're looking at about 50 to 60 crores or 70 crores of business coming in from roller schools as well. So that's uh, something which no one has done it till today in this country, and we are able to achieve that. Uh, until now, they have been importing from so many years from Sweden. So we are able to stop that moving forward. So uh, is there any uh, delay going from defense department side because uh, on the certification front because we were supposed to get this around or uh, two months back when we last uh, last interacted, when, when uh, in the last call you were saying that yeah, this there, might be coming. There has been a I'm not yes, there has been a delay, but the issue here is that to certify a product which is a hundred percent import substitute, they have to do all the trials uh, to ensure that it is at par with the import uh, product what they're getting it right now, which they have now uh, it's been done. So the process itself took that much time. I won't blame the defense department for that because they have to be 100% sure before they take a call on that. So fortunately, we are through with that right now, and it's only the paperwork which is pending, which will be done in a month's time. Right? Okay, okay, okay. So it's only the paperwork which is uh, remaining, and else our product is totally qualified, right? If, if I'm Absolutely, yes, yes. Okay, okay, that's it. My more from my side. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Janesh Shah from RSPN Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, so, I'm audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, so my first question would be with uh, respect to the new segment that we are entering, which is oil and gas fields. So, I would like to, we have like the facility in Hezawa, that's right, for that. So, I would like to know the status of that, like everybody talks with the customers. So, what's the like, uh, uh, what's the like the status of order and uh, how, 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 from when we can expect the execution for the state? So, basically, we had inquiries from various companies. Uh, I would like, uh, the first company, we have already received the first articles order uh, to do the first articles for uh, Weatherport right now. Uh, we are right up there. Uh, so we have received the purchase order for the first article. So once we execute the first article, the qualification process is about four to six months. But what they have indicated to us is that they are not going to wait for the qualification. They are going to work on a couple of major products, products with us for which we are doing the first articles and we get qualified across the board for uh, two or three products of theirs. And once uh, we finalize the pricing and everything, we, we enter into a long-term agreement with them. And then we are looking at a substantial revenues coming in from the oil and gas itself. So right now, we are not considering this uh, in our uh, guidance as well, because we would like to be a little bit, of, uh, little bit conscious about the fact of getting qualified for the first articles and then getting the batch and volume production into place. So this is not being included in our revenue guidance for now. 
So, but it is going very well right now, and we are on track with that. Okay, so like uh, just a big idea to get about it that we can expect uh, execution from probably the second half of the next year of uh, probably the second half of the year. The overall order book orders for these products can be between twenty-five to thirty million dollars per year. So we can expect the uh, we have established a specific line for it, and we are looking at probably in the second half of next year. Probably we should be able to start the. Uh, Real batch and uh, volume production for that, and you can see in FY27 a full-grown revenue from oil and gas uh, by itself. Okay, thanks a lot. And my second question uh, would be: uh, since we have a significant amount of revenue from uh, blue energy, so I would just like to uh, know the reliability of the statement that uh, uh, the product of uh, blue energy is a solid oxide fuel cells. Like uh, as well, some that that uh, 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 solid oxide fuel cells of blue, blue energy like emits more carbon than the power is, which can in long term have a uh, adverse impact on them. Though uh, blue is having a uh, good response as of now, so I would like to just know the reliability of the statement and which can uh, have an adverse impact on entire as well uh, in the long term. No, well, that's absolutely not right. See, if you look at, it's a very simple thing. You know, when you're converting a, a natural gas that is methane, you have a very low carbon footprint, right? That's what uh, the current uh, model is. Now, when you go to electrolyze it, it's zero carbon footprint. So this is where we stand. So there's no way that you can compare with the power grid and say that it is more or less. It doesn't work like that. Okay, okay, uh, that's it. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Viprav Srivastav from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, hi. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing me a follow-up question. Uh, I'm audible, right? Yeah, you're audible. Please go ahead. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, regarding uh, the commitment for FY26, so I mean. Uh, for fuel cells, so basically uh, the forecast which has been given by Bloom, so on those forecasts, what kind of margins to expect? I mean, this year we're doing around 20, 21% margins, right? So next year, do you expect that to increase or uh, to say fattish? How do you see this? No, we are, for FY26, we are looking at, as I said, uh, closer to mid-20s. That's around 24% plus minus 100 basis points. That's, that's what we are looking at. Fair enough, sir. And so, second question on the other expense for this quarter, it's around 12.5. I mean, I know operating leverage will kick in as to bring it down. But again, uh, where do you see it stabilizing? I mean, other expenses percentage of sales on a, on a sustainable basis, how do you see it uh, stabilizing? There are two aspects of it. As I mentioned earlier, the outsourcing costs have gone up, mainly because of the plasma coating for our products, which we're sending it in the US. Now, okay. that plasma coating qualification is going on in MPR, right? So we already have the equipment, we have received it, the qualification process is going on. So that's going to come down drastically. So these are the various steps that we have taken to reduce our costs and improve our margins. So that's exactly what uh, the other expenses, what you see there is uh, going to come down over the next two quarters. So can I tell you by the end of this year, you expect this to stabilize to normal levels, right? The yeah, exactly. Because our outsourcing costs are going to come down drastically. Because of the cost. Yeah. Once we are qualified, our costs are going to come down. That gives you the conviction to achieve 21%. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vanj Modi from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm audible, right? Yes, sir. You're audible. So, I just wanted some clarity on the outlook for exports for S526 and S527. Going forward, what is the expectation in revenue and contribution to modeling? For S526? S526 and S527, what is the possibility of S527? No, as I said earlier, S526, we are looking at a substantial growth in MNC aerospace business as well as the clean energy sector. Then the oil and gas might kick in slightly later in the second half of the year, and then for FI27, it will be a full-grown revenue both on oil and gas as well. So you're looking at oil and gas for FI27 would be around $35 million at least, 
and then obviously the clean energy numbers you all know about it the way we are doing it we grow at 20% year on year basis and then mnc aerospace business is going to grow at 40 to 45% year on year basis so we going to see a substantial growth in exports in three different sectors one is aerospace one is uh, clean energy and the third one is oil and gas by fy27 you will you will see a full grown uh, export uh, potential in these three areas because by that time we will be qualified for all the projects in mnc aerospace business oil and gas as well thank you the next question is from the line of jinesha from rsp and ventures please go ahead yeah so thanks a lot for taking my question uh, i just uh, uh, i might have missed uh, one thing that i would like to know uh, the uh, fy25 projections for this two segments specifically which is green energy and uh, space energy can you say that Green energy and aerospace, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So as I said, we are looking at about uh, in the clean energy segment. Probably we'll be doing around 380 to 400 crores, 380 crores and odd uh, for FI25. And in the space sector, we're looking at around uh, close to about 55 to 60 crores of revenues coming in uh, in the space segment as such. And this is going to grow more and more because our new projects that we are doing right now, we get qualified for them, the first articles. And that's how I said over the next two years, FI 26, 27, you will see a substantial growth in both these areas and also in the oil and gas in FI 27 as well. Okay, so like we were looking about 40% growth that you uh, mentioned the big uh, uh, percentage, right, for uh, aerospace? For aerospace, yes, because we are not only looking at one company, we are looking at multiple companies and we have an exclusive facility being commissioned by end of December, January for aerospace, uh, specifically for MNC customers. And uh, that's a state-of-the-art plant which we are commissioning in Hyderabad by end of December. So that will really take us to the next level in terms of higher productivity and achieving those numbers what we're looking at in the growth target. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viprav Srivastava from Philips Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thanks for allowing me one more follow-up question. So, uh, regarding the uh, uh, Bloom's forecast, so 4,000 hotboxes which you are telling, so this is for the full year, is it shared by Bloom or is it internal forecast? No, it is not internal. Whatever I am talking about is what clear indication they have given us as far as the forecast is concerned. That's what I am uh, communicating to you. Right. Why I am asking this actually because the state estimates of Bloom Energy is very bullish for uh, calendar that we twenty five. They expect mm -hmm. large data center orders coming in. Uh, so that's not collaborating, I mean, uh, with what you are saying. So and Yeah, I, so let me explain this to you. This is what they have given us as of recently in the last two, three weeks. Okay? okay. Now, this gets revised up, but there's no downward to this. See, the good news is that we suffered last year and yeah. because of the transition change from one product to the other, point number one. Point number two is that created uh, reduction in shipments and all that. But we are back to normal right now. That's the great news. And second is that the increased forecast will kick in by end of this quarter, uh, the way the bloom uh, communicates to us. Because we have enough time for the year to procure all the material to adhere to their requirements. So that 4,000 can go up even higher. That That is something which I can tell uh, once they communicate to us by end of this quarter. So that's how it works. Normally they do it by end of this year. Okay, fair. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. In the interest of time, this was our last question, and I now hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivas Reddy for closing comments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending, uh, to everyone for attending this earnings calls today. You know, as I said earlier, that we are progressively improving in our uh, revenue growth and as well as our margin, and we'll continue to do that. And uh, we'll Sincerely thank all our shareholders and investors regarding uh, supporting MCAR. And uh, we'll definitely see better and better uh, growth numbers and margins sequentially quarter on quarter and over the next two, three years. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of MTA on Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.